Live from New York, this is the WB11 News at 10, the 2002 Emmy winner for New York's most outstanding newscast. Anti-war protests cross police and language barriers today as angry Americans take their anti-war message to the streets of Midtown, scuffling with the NYPD. Some people were hurt, others arrested. Good evening. We are hearing right now at this minute of a possible emergency situation on Lexington Avenue and 42nd Street. We're hearing that emergency services officers are asking for emergency services and ambulance to come to that location, but we're not quite sure what is happening. We're sending a crew to the scene. Exactly. We're not sure exactly what's going on there. We're sending a crew. We'll let you know as soon as we know. As for the protests here today in New York, just one of hundreds of rallies around the world protesting possible war with Iraq. Some 100,000 demonstrators here in New York braved the cold outside the U.N., or as close as they could get, sending a strong message for peace. But police say the message was too strong and things got out of hand. Jill Conway reports. It was a massive rally up and down First Avenue. Anti-war protesters chanting and holding up signs saying, peace is patriotic, no war, and get warheads out of D.C. They want their voices heard when they say war is not inevitable. I think that the whole world wants peace, but some people just think that they need to fight a war for it. We've lived through 9-11. We know that there, are, that there are evil people, there are violent people in the world, but I still don't believe that bombing a lot of innocent women and children is even going to do anything about Saddam Hussein. With the huge demonstration just blocks from the UN, security was extremely tight. Police officers stationed at every corner. But it was not all peaceful. Fights broke out. Eight cops were injured, some 50 protesters arrested. Two horses assigned to our mounted unit were also injured. One slipped and fell on the ice. The second horse was punched in the head and pulled to the ground by a protester. The horse suffered an injured leg. The protester was quickly arrested. More than 100,000 people expected at today's rally. The crowd spans more than 10 city blocks down First Avenue. The police were totally unprepared for the massive numbers that we told them were coming out for this. They refused to give us a permit for the march. Which is something a Supreme Court judge upheld. The rally brought together people of all ages, from the very young to the very old. From Hollywood actors to everyday people. People from around the nation and around the world. As Eleanor Roosevelt said, it isn't enough to talk about peace. One must believe in it. It's important that Americans come out. And I think when you see this kind of diversity and these kind of numbers, it shows that this nation is not behind this war. We are not prepared to sacrifice one drop of American blood for oil. You need a legitimate authority to declare and to wage war. Authority. Protesters want Bush to look for alternatives to war. While they are afraid of a possible terrorist attack, they don't see war as an answer. We have to have wise men who can lead us to peaceful solutions and not war. Jill Conway, WB11 News at 10. The protests here in New York were just one of many around the globe as millions of demonstrators took to the streets, voicing their opposition to war with Iraq. Jim Ribble now with more. Berlin als Hauptstadt gesehen hat bisher. They held gatherings around the world, young and old alike, from Europe to the Middle East, Asia, and Africa. hoping to avert war. In Europe, France and Germany remain largely critical of the United States' call for war in Iraq, and so the French took to the streets in Paris. And nearly a half a million Germans demonstrated in Berlin. Yet another half million in London's Hyde Park. It may be winter, but all of you together are generating some serious street heat. George Bush can feel it, Tony Blair can feel it, turn up the heat. Anti-war activists joined forces across the U.S. 
in the Midwest in places like Detroit and Chicago, and along the West Coast, San Diego and Seattle. There's absolutely no reason to rush to war. War, war should only be used as a last resort. I'm Jim Ribble reporting. And on this day of world protest, Saddam Hussein welcomed an envoy from the Vatican today. He was carrying a letter from Pope John Paul II to the Iraqi leader. The Vatican won't reveal what's in the letter, and there's no word on what went on during the envoy's 90-minute meeting with Saddam Hussein. The pontiff is on the record saying he wants to see a peaceful resolution to the Iraq crisis. Mary. Will today's worldwide anti-war protests have the power to change the president's mind about war with Iraq? Suzanne Malvo has more on how the White House is handling the pressure. Across the world, hundreds of thousands of anti-war protesters reacting to this. The American people are strong and resolute. The American armed forces are brave and ready. And in freedom's cause, we will prevail. President Bush putting the world on notice that the U.S. could very well go to war with Iraq. But responding to the massive weekend protests, the White House insists Mr. Bush still wants peace. A spokeswoman saying the president views force as a last resort. He still hopes for a peaceful resolution and that it's up to Saddam Hussein. The president is a strong advocate for freedom and democracy. And one of the democratic values we hold dear is the right of people to peacefully assemble and express their views. But America's views are overwhelming on taking any immediate action against Saddam Hussein. A new poll shows 37% of Americans want to act soon, but 59% want to give inspectors more time. While 38% want the U.S. to act now, 56% want to wait for the support of allies. President Bush's staunchest ally, British Prime Minister Tony Blair, is facing even greater opposition from his own country. But he continues to make the case more time for inspectors means more time for Iraq to build up its weapons arsenal. The menace, and not just from Saddam, will grow. The authority of the UN will be lost. And the conflict, when it comes, will be even more bloody. Administration sources say the U.S. and Britain plan to introduce a second U.N. resolution midweek. It would likely declare that Iraq continues to be a material breach of resolutions requiring it to disarm and would set a deadline for Saddam Hussein to comply. The administration says the next important test is to see if Iraq complies with U.N. demands to destroy its forbidden missiles, recently discovered by the inspection team. Administration sources say if President Bush does not get the support of U.N. Security Council members for a second resolution in the next couple of weeks, he'll then make the critical decision whether to move forward without them. Suzanne Aldo, the White House. The information that pushed the country into a more heightened state of alert may now be in doubt and has the administration backing off it a little bit, but that has not lessened security concerns across the country and especially right here in New York City. We're going to get more now from Lolita Lopez. Eight days after the nation moved to a heightened terror alert, the changes are still visible at street corners across New York City, a city on permanent orange status. In his radio address today, the president reassured listeners law enforcement would stand watch 24 hours a day against terrorism. And he also tried to ease Americans' fears. This after hundreds of people cleaned out stores this week of duct tape and plastic sheeting. Many of these dangers are unfamiliar and unsettling. Yet the best way to fight these dangers is to anticipate them and act against them with focus and determination. But is this anticipation helping or scaring people? Yesterday, Homeland Security Secretary Tom Ridge advised against sealing doors and windows, a tip many took off of government websites. My concern is the level of rhetoric coming out of Washington and New York. Obviously, if it would endanger national security to reveal information, it shouldn't be done. But I think there is more of a feeling of paranoia around the city. What if they don't do anything when he gets hurt or killed or murdered? And then you go, well, why didn't they say something? And then when they don't say something, it's another story. I think what the government did this week was right. They had information. I think they should pass it to the public. It's important to do that. At a taping of 11 News close-up, security expert Robert Strang insisted the warnings are meant for the public and law enforcement to remain vigilant. The raised alert was based on intelligence suggesting non-specific attacks against American targets. When we get that specific information, you'll see uh, U.S. troops move in, you'll see the FBI and the state police, and you'll see a real 
effort to clear that area and keep people safe. Would you rather only when there's specific threats or only when you really know something they tell us? Very specific threat, threats. Yeah, I think I think the ones that uh, I've been hearing on the news are uh, they haven't backed any of them up. That was Lolita Lopez, who is now checking out the police situation at 42nd Street and Lexington Avenue. As soon as we hear from Lolita, we will bring you an update.